everyone. This video is about a Raspberry Pi powered pet detector I made that sends me a text letting me know when my cat or dog wants to be let outside. My cat is a silent type, so he'll stand at the door for hours, patiently waiting to be let through without uttering a single meow. Because he's not spoiled enough already, I made this pet detector to watch the door and send me a text when he wants to be let through. That way, I can be a better cat servant by dropping everything I'm doing and rushing to his aid. Come on in, Sprack. The pet detector uses the TensorFlow MobileNet model for object detection and uses the Twilio API to send texts. In this video, I'll explain how it works so you can use the concepts in your own object detection applications. The pet detector uses a Raspberry Pi with a Pi camera that points at the door. I set up the Pi to run TensorFlow object detection by following the steps from my TensorFlow object detection on the Raspberry Pi tutorial video. The pet detector uses the MobileNet SSD model to perform object detection on a live Pi camera video feed. The model detects cats or dogs in each frame and finds their location. If the pet is detected within the predefined inside box for at least 10 frames, pet once outside is displayed on the screen and a text is sent to my phone. Similarly, if the pet is detected in the outside box, the program sends a text letting me know my pet wants inside. Let's take a look at some of the code that makes this work. I've uploaded the Pet Detector Python script to GitHub and linked it in the video description below if you want to follow along. You can use the code as an example to help build your own object detection applications. First, the program initializes TensorFlow and loads the MobileNet model into system memory. Then, it initializes the Pi camera and begins continuously capturing frames. Each frame from the Pi camera is passed into this pet detector function that holds the bulk of the pet detection code. Inside the pet detector function, the frame is passed into the TensorFlow neural network. The network detects objects in the frame and draws their location in the image. Each detected object has three properties, location, detection confidence, and class name. These are output into three different variables, boxes, scores, and class. The boxes variable contains the xy coordinates of each detection box. The scores variable contains the detection confidence of each object. The classes variable contains the class ID number of each object. A fourth variable, num, shows how many objects were detected in the frame, even if they have close to 0% confidence. The variables are all stored in order of the highest detection confidence to the lowest confidence. My pet detector assumes that the object with the highest detection confidence is the cat or dog. For each variable, it looks at the first item in the list, which is stored at the zero index. For each frame, the code checks whether the class of the top detected object is a cat or a dog by looking at the value stored in the classes00 variable. The classes variable only gives their ID numbers, so you have to check the label map to see which number corresponds to which class string. In the label map, a 17 corresponds to a cat and an 18 corresponds to a dog. My program uses an if statement to check if the value stored in classes00 is a 17 or an 18. If it isn't, the program ignores the detection results and waits for the next frame. Once the code is confirmed that the detected object is a cat or dog, it finds the location of the object in the image by looking at the values in the boxes variable. The boxes 00, zero variable gives xy coordinates for the bottom left and top right quarters of the detection box. They are stored in the order y min, y max, x min, and x max. However, the values are normalized to the width and height of the image. They have to be multiplied by the image width and image height to get the actual coordinates. To find the center of the object, the program calculates the midpoint between y min and y max and the midpoint between x min and x max. Then, the program uses an if statement to check if the center of the detected object is within the predefined inside box or outside box. If it's in either box, it increments the corresponding counter variable. I've set the boxes to match the location where my cat or dog would be standing for this particular camera angle. The box boundaries can be changed if the camera is at a different angle. When the counter variable reaches 10, meaning the cat or dog has been detected inside the box for at least 10 frames, it draws a message on the screen and sends a text to my phone. To send a text, the program uses the Twilio API. Twilio is a service that allows you to send text messages to phones over the internet. The API is rather straightforward to use, but it requires setting up a Twilio account. 
I put a link to a brief tutorial on how to use the Python Twilio API in the video description below. Once the text has been sent, the program pauses detection for the next 30 frames, which is about 20 seconds. While it's paused, it won't perform any actions. I did this so the program wouldn't continuously spam my phone with text messages. Putting it all together, the program can identify my pet, determine if it wants to be let inside or outside, and send me a text letting me know. This way, I can be a better servant to my cat and prevent him from ever having to suffer in silence. I hope this example helps you understand how to use the TensorFlow Object Detection API to create detection programs with cool functionality. When combined with the versatility of Python and TensorFlow, the Raspberry Pi can be used for a wide variety of applications. Thanks for watching this video, and see you next time.